The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, or its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Hello, everyone. It's week four of the Geek, Skeezers, and Googleization show on W4CY.com and iHeartRadio. Welcome back. I'm your host, Ira Wolf, along with my co-host, Keith Compagna, and our sponsors, JobBite and Success Performance Solutions. You'll hear more from them throughout the show. Uh, Today, we're talking about the future of talent acquisition. Uh, It's a topic near and dear to both Keith and my heart. Um, we live that every single day. Uh, apparently, it's top of mind in a lot of businesses these days, too. Uh, with the news that the latest unemployment rate dipped to 3.7%, uh, well below full employment. It's the lowest since 1969. Uh, you weren't around back then, Keith, but, nope. uh, you know, that was the, 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 the right in the middle of the Vietnam War. So, um, the draft was pretty busy, so people were being sucked out of the, the workplace, um, you know, when we graduated. If you didn't go to college, you didn't have a deferment, you you went to war. Yeah, um, so, good times. Yeah, so a lot of people were, were, uh, were busy doing that. Um, you know, for many companies, uh, the future's not coming. It's here. I mean, it's pretty tough to find people. And uh, so we're really excited today to, to uh, have our guest, uh, Janine Woodworth, from, uh, from Jobbike. Yep. Uh, is going to be talk. She's been in the business for quite a while. Um, just a couple other facts that people may not realize. You know, you, you hear unemployment rates three point seven percent, and they go, "Well, you know, it's there's still people looking for a job." Except if you're looking for a college grad, it's two percent. Right. I mean, it's it's two percent. Yep. Um, so that I mean, that's that's crazy. If I mean, that's if it's STEM, you're you're rounding up to zero. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's two percent unemployment, which means literally every every but every company that's looking for somebody who's a college grad, uh, who has a four year degree, and and even a two year degree is three point two or yeah three point two um, percent. Yep. Um, so you know, if you're looking for anybody that has more than a high school education, um, you're you're basically looking for somebody who has a job. They're working for someplace else, and uh, you know whatever name you want to have. Have them. You're if if you're hiring people, you're poaching them, you're taking them, you're creating a better opportunity, better salary, more competitive, more um, you know whatever whatever it is to entice them away from their right. current job. It may just be a shorter commute distance, right? Um, but that's how crazy it is. And the reality is, is that the way that talent acquisition companies within every kind of organization has been approaching recruitment has to change. The model that they're that they've built their fundamental behaviors around no longer exists. Right. And, and I think it's an illustration of, of the Im- immense amount of change that's going on. And like to your point, the future is here. Right. So, here. you know, I mean, people are still using job boards. I mean, they're, they're, we're going to talk a lot more about that shortly, what the mm-hmm. direction of that's going to be. But people still post their jobs. I, I you know, had nine or ten speaking engagements in the last few weeks. I know you've attended yep. SourceCon and yep. uh, ER. Um, Talent board. Talent ERE. board. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the candies. Um, so, you know, you've been out there, too. Um, and so at least, you know, on the short term, um, you know, posting, uh, you know, certainly referrals and social media and, and internal promotions are, are going to be big. Um, but if you have an open position uh, and you're looking outside, the expectation is, is that uh, it'll be posted on one of the job boards and the people that are applying there are not sitting around waiting to be hired. No, they already have a job. They may they may post the resume or they may apply, but they're looking for something better. And companies still are under this expectation that, you know, these people are, are desperate. They're looking for a job that, you know, since uh, I would say maybe since 2014, 2015, mm-hmm. um, after the, the economy recovered, those those days are over. Correct. Um, and uh, so it's it's going to take a it's going to take a lot more, um, a lot more incentives. 
Um, we're going to talk about candidate experience and user experience and uh, where things are going. And, you know, over the last month I or six weeks, I've been spending a lot of time on this Google uh, on how companies don't understand the fundamentals about how job boards work right. uh, and especially how Google for jobs works. Uh, and, you know, with three out of four job seekers starting their search on Google and people say, well, don't they go to Indeed? No, they don't start a search on Indeed or Career Builder, or Glass, or, uh, Career Builder Monster Glassdoor. Right. They, they open their phone up and they say, who's hiring locally or what's a good company? What's the best place? Who just got the awards? OK, yeah. Google. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I keep saying this again, but. Uh, you know, I, I coined uh, Googleization in uh, 2008 when I wrote the first book. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was catchy. Um, didn't necessarily fully understand where it was. And then uh, kind of dovetailed that with the recruiting in the age of Googleization, uh, which came out just about a year ago. Um, but had no idea where that Google was going to enter the space, you know, with Google for hire, <laughs> You know, uh, Google for jobs, and uh, and now um, well, I'm really excited um, down at, down the road, uh, kind of going down this rabbit hole of voice search, yep. uh, and <clears throat> and uh, you know maybe with Janine we can talk a little bit about that, uh, but you know what happens when people don't basically pull out their phone and go to a landing page or don't go to a job board, but they ask uh, Siri or Alexa or Katana is, hey, Siri, you know, hey, Siri, can you find me a new job? You know, what what's a good place to work nearby that's going to pay me more than $60,000 a year uh, yep. and has uh, good health care benefits? And it comes back with one result, because with voice search, you don't have a choice of being on the first page of having 10. Right. It's only one result. And how do you get to be that number one? And uh, what's that going to do to... Um, you know, all the platforms. Including, sure, including, sure. You know, and so. even you know, to your point, we're talking about the way technology is moving and, and at such a fast uh, rate of change. But what we're doing at Jobvite that I, I think helps separate us from the rest of the, the app, you know, the applicant tracking systems is that we put a lot of attention on the candidate experience, on the human element. And that was really a lot of the messaging that resonated back to me down in, in Florida the last week. This idea that for HR leaders and, and busy talent acquisition people to get their head around the technology advancements that are going on is one thing, but they simply cannot neglect the human element. And you have to have a strategy in place. I'm glad that we have Janine on the line today to help yep. maybe uh, share a little bit about how we got here yep. and what to do about it now. And, and before, we're going to bring her on right now, but uh, before we get there, we just a reminder for everybody, uh, we're live. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a question about anything we're talking about or you would like us to talk about, uh, you can call 561-623-9429. That's 561-623-9429. Love to hear from you. Um, so let's uh, let's kind of jump in. I yeah, think we, sure. we, can, we teed it up pretty good for Janine. Uh, Janine Woodworth, um, she's uh, Director of Strategic Services at JobFight. Um, she's been around uh, the recruiting world for about 20 years. So we're, we're, that's one of my first leads. Uh, <laughs> she's got a couple great stories, uh, especially with the experience of the, being around. Or she, she at least remembers. I don't know if you used it, Janine, but uh, you were around when the very first applicant tracking system <laughs> came on the market. Um, so, yes. Janine, how are you doing today? I'm doing terrific. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, I'm looking yeah. to, forward to having some fun here with you guys. Yeah, that's for sure. So I appreciate it, and I know uh, you and you and Keith know uh, one another. Yep. Uh, so tell us about uh, you know twenty years is a is an eternity. It's probably worth a century uh, uh, what it used to be uh, in this space. But uh, you you said you you kind of entered this world about twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, candidates were probably still using dial up. <laughs> you know to, what was it like back then <laughs> in the before yeah. time? Yeah. Oh my God! I, you know. I, I remember I remember the early days so vividly because it, it does feel like it was just yesterday, honestly. And in so many ways, I feel like a lot hasn't changed. Uh, but then I know that's not the truth, right? Uh, well, that is that is probably the truth. That's what I tell people. It's, you know, I've got a I've got a slide, and, and I might have mentioned as I went to the other show is one of my well, Keith's seen this. I've got a slide that has a a tablet, a uh, 
you know, like an iPad inserted into a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And companies have these old processes because nothing's changed. They're just using new technology. But the yeah. reality is you can't use a typewriter to send a text message. Right. Right. <laughs> so, right. Well, yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. right. Probably not. That's the, everything I do is to try to change. <clears throat> Sorry, that's everything that I do to work with customers to really figure out, you know, what are their what are their wonky, you know, old crazy processes, and how can we, you know, best leverage a balance of technology with just good old fashioned human interaction. Yeah, seven um, page really PDF great. download to apply for a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but in the early days, we were posting jobs on, you know, we were placing ads in the newspaper. I was working with mm. the San Jose Mercury. Um, to get my jobs posted um, in right. that in the newspaper, and we were, you know, these were the days where Monster was just starting out, Monster.com, and you know, candidates. This was a whole new thing of what's the web versus what's the internet. I mean, these are the conversations we were having um, as recruiters back then, um, and. You know, we were using an old school, like the first generation applicant tracking system, um, Resumex. And we were, you know, we were forced to have to cold call into companies and do good old fashioned, you know, dial for dollars and trying to find the right person in the right, you know, organization. So super fun times, but certainly things have changed quite a bit. Somebody going off? Somebody need you? Somebody, <laughs> somebody here is on the on the podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So in terms of just kind of what's changed, I mean, since the the days of the newspaper and um, and Resumex, we still have applicant tracking systems. Um, they're getting more and more robust, and you know, um, they can handle a lot more functionality and workflows and different types of candidates and you know scheduling and offer letter templates. I mean, it's, it's really cool. Um, but part of me is also super frustrated, um, by the lack of, um, progress in the recruitment technology space, you know, mm -hmm. over the years. And I, what and I do, go do ahead. You, what do you think is keeping people from progressing the way that you feel they should? Yeah, I would say that honestly, like as soon as a company starts to get their feet underneath them and they start to really, you know, get in innovation and they have the right people and they're growing the business, they get, you know, acquired yeah. and they get acquired by these, you know, large organizations, let's call them Oracle and IBM and others where then they, it's just a cash cow, right? And then they're just, they're not putting in the effort to really innovate and drive new business. So then it just flattens out the whole technology space again. And then you have new players like Javite kind of coming in and trying to push forward, you know, to drive innovation and really make a difference for candidates and, and our, our customers. But it's, that I would say that that's kind of the biggest obstacle that's been in the way um, in our space. What, what um, about the what about the, the the customer? I mean, the clients, the, the companies, uh, not not the technology. So you know, even if if um, the technology advances and um, you know it gets flattened by because of the acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Isn't, I mean, are you still seeing a, res you've been in this business, uh, well, as long as I have, but specifically in the recruiting side, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, why are companies so reluctant or so hesitant, you know, what's, what's holding them back to that, I guess they don't see the light? Um, well, I think that there's a, there's a dependent, there's probably too much of a dependency on the technology, frankly. Um and it, it just keeps getting worse. Like uh, there's so much dependency on technology and what is the applicant tracking system doing? And now we're, we're seeing onboarding, you know, technology solutions. And we've got, there's a, there's a technology software solution for every niche, you know, little tiny nick and cranny um, of the recruiting process. There is a supplier, you know, to solve it. And it's so overwhelming to most recruiting organizations that they don't know, you know, what to focus on first. And what they should be focusing on first is, let's get your house in order, let's clean up your processes, let's figure out where you have pain, um, and then what, who, are your, who are your target audiences? You know, what are those candidate types? 
and where where do they hang out? What's important to them, and what kind of experience you know should we be tailoring to support them? And for example, like you've got retail organizations that have so many candidates coming in, they're applying, and they have really I'm thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming in, and they have this problem where how do I quickly assess? And, and screen out all of the bad so that I can focus on the few. Um, whereas you've also got technology companies or other companies and or the same retail organizations that also have hard to fill positions and they have to take a completely different approach to recruiting. And you know, there's different target audiences, just like in marketing, there's different targeted approaches for candidate behavior and what we should be serving up in terms of product and technology solutions. And I think it's wild to think about how, you know, we talk about recruitment being marketing anymore because of the supply and demand shift in the talent marketplace. Totally. The way organizations, the very same organizations that depend on their sales departments to grow revenue are constantly providing them updated training, updated techniques, updated software, so they can keep up with the evolving buyer. Mm-hmm. And here we have the candidates out there that are evolving so much more rapidly, mm-hmm. and recruiting departments uh, inside of organizations simply haven't okay. had the opportunity to keep up. Okay. So yeah. we're right up against the break, Janine. Uh, okay. So we will be back uh, in a second. That's a great lead-in. We're going to come back and, okay. and and talk about that. How do we uh, how do we sync the the candidate market with the uh, with with the employer market? Uh, we've got. Uh, we want to again thank our our uh, hosts, our sponsors. Uh, I guess we're the host, but yes. our, our sponsors. Thank you. Uh, Job Bite <laughs> and Success Performance Solutions, and uh, we'll take you right out to the break. We'll be back in two minutes. Have you ever dreamt of being on the radio? Well, now is your chance. Be a radio show guest on the number one ranked internet radio station and promote you and your business for free. Yes, you heard it, free. Business advertising right here on W4CY.com. Call 561-506-4031 now to get booked on one of our shows. That's 561-506-4031. Get your free advertising now. What's up, everyone? This is Keith from the Geek, Skeezers, and Googleization show, powered by Jobvite. Jobvite knows career paths are made by people, not by open job requisitions. Jobvite's platform ties recruitment marketing directly to applicant tracking and onboarding, creating continuous candidate engagement that effectively connects recruiters with qualified passive candidates. Used by over 50,000 recruiters placing over 1 million jobs, Jobvite's platform impacts every company in every industry. Check us out at jobvite.com. Listen carefully. Up to 9 out of 10 job candidates visiting your company career page leave before completing an application. You heard that right. 90% of candidates who want to apply for a job at your company don't. That's just plain crazy, especially in today's tight labor market. Candidate experience matters. Stop turning candidates away. Let Success Performance Solutions help. Call us at 800-803-4303 or register at successperformancesolutions.com slash W4CY. Schedule a no-obligation consultation and get special access to insider tips to recruit faster and hire smarter. Back everybody to the Geek Skeezers and Googleization show. We've got Janine Woodworth from Jobvite joining us today. The topic is what's going on with strategic talent acquisition. How did it get so? Uh, what did you, what did you call it? Wonkus, Janine? Wonky. <laughs> Wonky. I say catty wampus. I got that from that works. a long while ago. And, and before the break, we were talking about how. Truly, to grow a business, you need three elements. You need to grow revenue, you need to grow your clients, and you need to grow the number of people that are supporting the rest of the growth. How do you find companies are keeping up with that need to grow, especially in this tough talent marketplace? Yeah, great question. Um, Where I've seen 
most companies going is this this real shift towards candidate towards the candidate experience. Um, and that's been a shift that's been happening over the last, I want to say maybe three, four years or so. And with that comes a whole new perspective, right? Like you were saying at the top of, of the of the podcast, you know, things have been changing and shifting and, and recruiting organizations are looking at that as really a differentiator because talent is key and the highly talented, very experienced skill set is not easy to find anymore. There's so much competition for the same people that you have to step up and really differentiate yourself with how are you treating the candidate, you know, with information out on the web, you know, folks have an opportunity to, to really get the blow by blow everything negative about you um, Mm -hmm. because everybody and their brother and sister has posted it online of what their interview experience was last week. So you've really got to hone in on, you know, really solidifying the best behavior and differentiating and being that candidate experience um, expert. But I see this moving more into like the part of that shift is also moving more towards marketing as we talked about it before the break. Um, And no longer is it you have to accept somebody applying for a job. You have to be out there driving talent into your organization and actually doing proactive marketing. And I have been saying for years and years, probably the 20 years I've been in this business, why isn't recruiting under marketing, you know, or even sales, but even more so today, more than ever before, recruiting is a marketing function. Um, and because it's all about how you market the business as a potential employer to purchase, you're not purchasing a product, you're purchasing a place to work every day. It's even more important than a purchase. Um, so we're starting to see more and more of the stuff that you're seeing in product marketing and with retailers. Let's talk about Amazon for a second. You know, I buy my things with a one click purchase. Woo. You know, I got it quick and dirty, I'm done. Um, and that's the expectation of consumers. And that's the expectation of our of our candidates in the market. So we have to be thinking, what is the best experience for that candidate? And it starts with the front end and the recruitment marketing aspects. Absolutely, absolutely. And it just speaks to the idea that people today with the, you know, a little joke on the side here is how Ira and I were talking about the evolution of technology. And and maybe it's not all that great, but I, I always bring up in small circles that we're already cyborgs. We already have our technology in our hand or in our pocket most of the time. And the idea that the way that people go throughout their lives consuming content, making buying decisions, making decisions in terms of where they go to eat, who they're going to see. All of this plays a role in the way that companies can really engage people or maybe mm-hmm. the better way the better way to put it is if you engage people that way, you'll get a better response. Yes, yeah. but you need the flexibility like the the engagement piece is key, but like today with recruiting, we're we're leveraging video you know, technology, whether it's video job descriptions or it's a video day in the life of, you know, that's posted on the career website or texting is really starting to take off so that we can have immediate candidate engagement so that candidates don't have to fill out a stupid form anymore to apply to a job um, or remember the old school, you know, written applications. Those are hopefully a thing of the past, everybody listening. Mm -hmm. And we have kind of this, this, this texting functionality that can quickly build profiles um, and or build custom, very personalized relationships immediately to get them engaged at the front end of the entire recruiting process. Yeah, I mean, Janine, you haven't seen um, my presentations. I, I don't know what... Um Keith has shared, but, uh, you know, you, you, well, and, and from the slides, it prob- probably doesn't reflect that. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that, you know, certainly I talk about is let's talk about the application from a can and from a candidate experience standpoint, you know, I, I talk about uh, asking, you know, what, what are the handful of questions that you need to ask to qualify somebody? And that's that initial application. So it might be, uh, 
for, you know, it might be for questions, you know, are they over 18 years old? Uh, you know, right. do you have a valid, are you licensed in the state of California or Pennsylvania? Um, you know, do you have a four year degree? Do you have a particular skill set? Uh, you know, what are the, and, and I think that takes it back to what hasn't changed because if you go back 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago or five years ago, uh, people ask for everything. They ask for your name, where you no, live, your address, your three, pre <laughs> your three pre previous employers, the supervisor's name, even if they work for a job for 20 years, it's I like, know. it was just, you know, it was just Do crazy. We really need that information right now. Like, right. so I will always challenge customers, like you need to scale this back and the apply process has to be super slick and super right. fast. Otherwise you're going to lose them. And we're seeing more and more churn at the front end during the mm -hmm. apply process. Yeah. And it's, the more you show the metrics, the more your customers are like, holy crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I, and I yeah. use, you know, I've been using the job bites statistic. I think that's the first time I was introduced to it. I think I downloaded the 2016 or 2017 and they had the funnel of how many, um, mm -hmm. How many views, how many people needed to see your ad and how many people needed, you know, started an application and completed an application. And, you know, the number was something, I think it was 432, yep, you know, to one. Uh, to one, to one higher. And then the talent board just came out, uh, the most recent ones now. And not, not only is this just a, a big survey. But it's a survey of the companies that feel that they're doing it right because they're, these are the companies that were surveyed to say we're we're competing for the best. We want to be the best that there is a candidate experience. And what they found was it took a hundred uh, one thousand sixty nine candidates to even know you had a job opening to get one good hire. That just blows people away. And mm -hmm. compared to where Joblight was just two years ago on their on their statistics, and I think yep. there was like fifty million applications, ten thousand yep. job seekers. So it you know, we're not talking, you know, three hundred and fifty people were surveyed and this is what they said. Right. Um I mean, it, it's a 300% increase in the number of people that need to see, to know you have a job opening, to even get one good hire. Um, but as you said, the abandonment rate, um, you know, and, and we don't, most people don't even track that. They don't even know to ask that of how many people start an application but complete it. Um, mm -hmm. But for, you know, and we, we work with pretty, you know, small, medium-sized businesses, but every company that we've brought on online, they're averaging on the first day that we start with their old application, 90% abandonment rate. So they have 10 people who want to apply and nine of them drop out. Mm -hmm. And they don't, and they yes. don't know that. I mean, it's, it's really eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when, and a statistic I heard was that 40% of folks that will show up on a on a company's primary website, their front website, forty percent of that traffic goes to the career site, yeah. um, and then and then that quickly drops off, you know, from there. So we're we're just looking at this all wrong. And well, well, the well, that's more, another, mm -hmm, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, you go. I was just going to say, the more we can personalize and 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 streamline the apply process, and frankly, if you're waiting. For candidates to apply to your job, you're already failing, right? Your recruiting has to happen much sooner than them showing up on your career website to apply to a job. Yeah, and and that's, that's what's really changed. Yeah, and I, I think to that point, you've, you know, with, with a lot of, and I'm just putting myself in the shoes of, of um, you know, the, the our customers um, that we talk to. Um, you know, they say, well, we, we, we have our ads up 24-7. Well, that's fine, but that's not necessarily proactive. I mean, you're, you're talking about much more than that. Yep. Um, just having your job posting up there uh, 365 days a year does not, you know, just just hang a help one inside on your front door and say, we're always looking for, <laughs> we're always looking. Uh, yeah. that's, that's not good enough. That's like the help wanted sign in the window. Yeah, in exactly. Yeah. 52. <laughs> but, you know, somebody actually has to walk by on the street and see the sign. And, you know, what's uh, of everybody in the, in this big old town of 50,000 people, how many people are going to walk by and see that sign? So there's all kinds of opportunity to, on the front end um, to leverage recruitment marketing tools. But but I also really hesitate to put it all on technology um, because I do think that we have an over dependency on technology in our space. Recruiters don't know how to pick up the phone and have a conversation with people. Um 
And if they're dispositioning and they're saying, I'm not interested, they're going to send that via email instead of talking to someone and telling them what, what they did or didn't do right um, so that they can be better next time. Yep. The, well, the human factor. Yeah, well, as, as you said after the last segment, boy, that went fast. Well, this went fast again. Uh, we're up again. We're going to take a, a, another quick break and hear from our sponsors, Jobvite and Success Performance Solutions. Uh, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what companies can do, what they need to change, how they can how they can improve that uh, candidate experience. And then uh, in, in a short time, we're going to talk about what the future looks like. Uh, we will be right back in two minutes. Have you ever dreamt of being on the radio? Well, now is your chance. Be a radio show guest on the number one ranked internet radio station and promote you and your business for free. Yes, you heard it, free. Business advertising right here on W4CY.com. Call 561-506-4031 now to get booked on one of our shows. That's 561-506-4031. Get your free advertising now. What's up, everyone? This is Keith from the Geek, Skeezers, and Googleization show powered by Jobvite. Jobvite knows career paths are made by people, not by open job requisitions. Jobvite's platform ties recruitment marketing directly to applicant tracking and onboarding, creating continuous candidate engagement that effectively connects recruiters with qualified passive candidates. Used by over 50,000 recruiters placing over 1 million jobs, Jobvite's platform impacts every company in every industry. Check us out at jobvite.com. Listen carefully. Up to 9 out of 10 job candidates visiting your company career page leave before completing an application. You heard that right. 90% of candidates who want to apply for a job at your company don't. That's just plain crazy, especially in today's tight labor market. Candidate experience matters. Stop turning candidates away. Let Success Performance Solutions help. Call us at 800-803-4303 or register at SuccessPerformanceSolutions.com slash W4CY. Schedule a no-obligation consultation and get special access to insider tips to recruit faster and hire smarter. Hey, we're back to the Geek Skeezers and Googleization show. I'm the host, Ira Wolf. I'm with Keith Compagna and our guest, Janine Woodworth from Jobvite, having a great conversation about talent acquisition, where it's going, where it came from, a lot of the challenges that are ahead. Hey, when we left off, we were talking about the uh, the candidate experience. I know there's a couple things that, that you talked about, how much technology is out there, and technology is certainly going to be a part of this. I mean, uh, I know there's probably a couple of people saying, well, thank goodness that we're still using spreadsheets and fax machines and mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 the phone calls, you know, in a Rolodex. Um, no, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're saying is, is that companies need to really look at, I think this is what we're saying, uh, companies mm-hmm. need to really look at their processes and their practices, you know, something as simple as what their application looks like, what are the minimum questions, how do we qualify that, and that you know, as good as that we think our uh, services are, our technology is, it's not going to fix the problem. It, it, it is somebody coming in and, and saying, oh, we're going to make this investment and we we expect, you know, to have this huge flow of applicants, of qualified mm-hmm. applicants. Uh, if it's based on a bad product, it's not going to work. And I just shared a story. I, I had, a you know, one of those things that says, OK, I, at least I know I'm doing some things right some days. Um, you know, we, we put a, a new client online uh, and uh, after about two weeks, I got this really good note and go, hey, thanks for really helping us. You exposed one of the problems. We thought that it was the millennials, the low unemployment rate. They're in Hawaii. Unemployment rate there, the average, the, yep. the unemployment rate's 1.8. That, yep. that not not for just nurses and 1.8 percent. I mean that's just crazy. And they uh, and they said that they found out that the one site that they were having a problem with was not that they weren't getting candidates to apply. The uh, HR coordinator was not responding to the candidates for two weeks, and by the time they got to them, they were gone. 
So one of, one of the benefits of sometimes of the technology, and I know you're a, you're a big proponent of this, Janine, um, is the data that you get from it, is, is the reports. And by looking at, hey, they were getting a lot of applicants, why aren't we following up with it? up with it solve part of the problem but they didn't know that without some track some some technology to help track it so i mean so where where do you see um I, you know I, I guess what's next i mean uh, mm-hmm. you know we're, we're talking about everybody has this data you know it used to be in a spreadsheet if companies that actually collected it in a spreadsheet they had it in a spreadsheet how do you see that changing because you know that we're, we're we're um you know we're data junkies Mm-hmm. Um, we, we have all this, there's all this data is out there. Um, but what's the next step? I mean, is, is, yeah. is, is it just, we get better with databases or, or well, is it- <laughs> I, I would argue that we're not data junkies in the recruiting space. Um, oh. I, I think that data collectors, <laughs> we collect it, but we don't do anything with it. Um, so it's really important to be, um, looking at the data what are the time, what are the time stamps, like from when a candidate applies to when they're first touched by a recruiter or that first engagement opportunity or how long after you submit a resume, how long is it taking the hiring managers to get back to you? You know, what is that, what are, what are the experiences, what are the time stamps and where can you establish key performance indicators? This is a key word, right? But, you know, establish where you are today with your metrics and your baseline, and then, you know, have little goals to try to, you know, reduce the time for a candidate to have to wait around. They've applied. You have to compete, you know, with your competition. How long is it taking um, them? Which brings me to another point. Some of the things that you can be doing beyond just, you know, gathering metrics and actually analyzing the data, um, you can also be going and applying to your own jobs, uh, go check out your career website. When was the last time you applied? Probably mm-hmm. the last time you got a job at the company, right? So go to the through the apply process. Where is there stupid stuff going on, right? Where do you have <laughs> duplication? You know, do you really have to ask all of these questions at this stage of the process, or can you ask them later? You know, after you've gotten them to apply and they're engaged and they're more, you know, susceptible to answering additional questions. And then, a secret shopper um, apply, pretend you're somebody else, and see how long it takes a recruiter to respond to you, and uh, and perhaps go through part of the pre-screening process just to see what that experience is like. And then I recommend you do that with some of your um, competitors, too, so that you have a real good sense of where you stand relative to everyone else. Janine, at the beginning of the show, we've, we kind of jumped right into it. So I don't know if we had the opportunity to explain to the audience the depth of experience you have. But you're the strategic uh, um Strategic Services Director for Jobvite. You're work, you've worked with monster companies. You've mm-hmm. been around all of the ATSs offered out there. In, yeah. term, in terms of, let's try to combine, uh, kind of bring it to a merge point here. We're talking about the process. We're talking about technology. We're talking about people. What are you seeing companies doing in terms of their mobile environments? Because I love that you said, you know, dr- you know drink mm-hmm. your own Kool-Aid, try out your own application process. I- I'm, I'm curious to find out what you're seeing yeah. out there in terms of the mobile environment. Well, a lot of companies, um, their technology solutions are not mobile enabled. Or they'll say they're mobile enabled, but they're not truly responsive design, which means that if you use an iPad versus an Android versus an iPod pad versus, you know, a PC laptop, the experience on the screen, it morphs and it changes to sure. ensure that everything is on the screen and visible and you don't have to shrink down the, the picture or, you know, highlight it to find um, the links on the page. So I'm seeing still to this day, companies do not apply online via mobile app. They don't realize that this is faulty um, technology. And more and more, you'd be astounded, especially in retail, it's over 50% of applicants come through mobile. Um, so sure. you, you've got to have that lockdown 
um, and fully capable to at least enable mobile apply and, you know, what is the search? What is the experience kind of navigating through the career website? I mean, here's a funny story. I I spoke last week at the uh, HR Southwest conference. Uh, You know, it's the second largest conference in the country, um, HR conference. And uh, I had a a great audience, a great attendance. So there was probably 150 people there close to it in the room. Um, you know, and I used to get offended with when during my presentation, everybody was on their phones, <laughs> you know, right. it's like, oh, I'm losing them, you know, <laughs> checking out the next, you know, what's in the next room, right. they're, you know, they're going to pick up and walk out. Uh, <laughs> and what, but I, I've built in so many cues to tell people. And one of the things is, te- do you test your application? Does it show up? Um, you know, can you read it on a smartphone? Can you read it on a, on, on a droid? And if you only have an iPhone, make sure you, you find somebody who has a droid, uh, you know, or, or a Samsung device, a PC device, uh, and check it out. So you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're directly on there. It's amazing how many, and, and the other thing I ask for is because I talk a lot about getting, you know, ensuring that your jobs show up in Google for jobs. And, and a lot of them don't. It's, I, I, there was a lot, literally a line of people that came up with cards. Yeah. And and said, hey, we, we need more information or can we talk to you afterwards? Where are you going to be? How do we connect with you? Um, because our job is not showing up or our job came up and it's not displayed properly. And when I asked how many people test their jobs, um, there might have been one or two hands wow. that yeah. went up. Uh, or they tested on only their device. But when I asked how many people tested on multiple devices, nobody does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, no. So you're absolutely correct. Let me go back to something you said just a few minutes ago. You, you talked about marketing. You know, marketing is is recruiting or recruiting is marketing <laughs> so, okay. uh, or vice versa. Um, you know, a lot of the, uh, what I talk about now is companies. What, what I'm, I mean, think about this. I'm, I'm talking to HR and recruiters. And I'm saying you need to go back and make sure your site's secure. Um, you know, do you have, you know, is there a, do you have an SSL certificate, which most people don't know what it means, but you know, does it come up that there's a secure certificate on it? Uh, but I'm talking about page speed. Does it load properly? Because you know, in addition to showing up on on your phone and you can read it, or the job candidate can read it, um, you know, it does does it take you know? three seconds to load or nine seconds. And that has nothing to do with HR or recruitment, but it has everything to do with it these days. And so I've been, you know, I, I've been creating a whole new lexicon for, you know, for this and teaching them the basics of SEO and marketing. And it's really opened up a lot of eyes. I mean, we have a, I have a, a new client, um, we're doing a, an audit just to see why their jobs weren't showing up in Google for jobs. And the first thing I found was they don't have a secure site. So the right. first message that a job seeker gets, if they're concerned and they have a good browser and they have protection on, on their devices, is that they get this message, this is not a private site or I your know. information is not private. Right. I mean, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> this is Let not me a drop out of here site. right now. You just scared me to death. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so I there's, just there's had so this conversation things. with a customer. I'm like, you guys have got to get rid of that message that pops up on screen because right. you're scaring, you know, <laughs> the bejesus out of all of the people that are getting yeah, there. Why, why would I give you all my information? Uh-huh. Yep. So, Janine, let me ask you this. Because this is, you know, Geek Skeezers and Googleization, our goal here is to really project what the future of work is going to be and provide our listening audience ways that they could start to accomplish a future state. What are some of the things, I'm curious to find out from you, what are some of the things that you have been getting back in terms of feedback from those companies that are being, that are uh, agreeing that the time has come to move from a reactive recruitment model to proactive? Is it coming from senior leadership? Is it coming Mm -hmm. from from the recruiters up? What have you been seeing? Yeah, I would say that the the leadership doesn't understand what's going on. They just know that they aren't, um, they're not as successful as they once were, and they don't understand it. And they assume it's the technology. And my my view is, well, it's partly the technology, but have you cleaned up your processes? You know, mm-hmm. are you are you still running spreadsheets? Um, and you have disparate processes across your organization. One recruiting team may be doing something completely different than another, or even from recruiter to recruiter, or coordinators are duplicating efforts. So where is that? Where are those gaps? Um, where can you streamline? Where are you? Um, where are you duplicating? Uh, you know, behavior. 
And is it super clear who's supposed to do what, when, and where? So have you, you know, I, I like to do this with customers. I'll do that current state kind of analysis and recommendations on where they have some, you know, stupid stuff going on. You all know what that is. Yep. Um, and then you move into like, a, okay, what do you want your future state to look like? And let's talk about, you know, who creates the requisition, who's doing the recruitment marketing and when, what are all those touch points? Are there integrations with different third party providers or not? But it's really kind of walking through and with little boxes and arrows, really highlighting what the role is and who's doing what from end to end through the recruiting process. And you'll find that there's disparity or there's duplication or there's not buy-in from the entire organization. Um, so then you find some gaps and then you can solve for those gaps. You said in the beginning, it's like, what are we going to talk about? Am I going to ask you questions? And, you know, we're, we're at the end. <laughs> uh, so we're, That's crazy. We're, yeah, it, it is. It, it definitely. <laughs> and you also said, hey, we can talk for hours on this. And uh-huh. uh, yep. that's probably being conservative. Um, there, I'm sure there's people that have a lot more questions. We'd love to have you back at some point. But if someone wants to get in contact with you, uh, what's the best way to, to reach you? Yeah, um, probably via my email address uh, at Jobvite. It is uh, my name, Janine.Woodworth at jobvite-inc.com. And and Janine is J-A-N-I-N-E? Yep, dot Woodworth, W-O-O-D-W-O-R-T-H. Right. Yeah, I, they, because I know Janine can be spelled in many different ways, including yeah. my act. And, and I do <laughs> want to say this. We have received an immense amount of positive feedback because Janine has come into the organization and put together a ta- uh, recruiting maturity assessment that enables our clients to literally – see what they like put out there, what it is that they feel they're doing well. And, and, uh, and that gives us that present state and the future state is, is conversations that we're having with them now. Yeah. So, so Janine, we're definitely going to have you back. Uh, I got okay. like a lo- I got, I got a full page of questions yeah. and things to, to follow up on. I'm sure we'll have com- conversations so online much. or offline. Uh, but, uh, for now, I really appreciate you taking some time and, and, and being part of the show. And, uh, again, we'll have you back and you great gave, gave a, a great segue because next week's guest, uh, is going to be Robbie Goulry from Engage. Uh, Keith, you met, uh, yep, Robbie, met Robbie a few Robbie weeks down at ago. SourceCon. Yeah. At SourceCon. Uh, I talked to him. We're going to be talking about AR and, and HR, uh, AI and HR. Yep. I keep saying AR, which is augmented reality, but, uh, <laughs> and that will be part of HR too. I just read where H, where AR is going to be part of website structure uh, within it. the next year or so, but uh, we're going to be talking about AI and, uh, HR. Uh, and uh, he's doing some fascinating but some scary work. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah. talk about it, uh, disrupting passive recruitment. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait till you hear that. A um, couple things I've added, a bunch of new tools, uh, especially related to how to make Google for Jobs work for you. Uh, they're all up online. Uh, you can get them from successperformancesolutions.com forward slash blog. And mm-hmm. on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of images. You can click on them and download it. So those are free tools. I'm also going to be posting that uh, up, on the, uh, our, up, up on the show website. Uh, we'll be uh, updating that uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if you'd like alerts, uh, you can go to uh, basically up to the site too. There's a yep. place to, to sign up for alerts. Uh, and uh, you can email me as well if there's any questions, if you'd like to be a guest uh, or a sponsor. We've still got room for a couple sponsors at iWolf, I-W-O-L-F-E, at super-solutions.com. Connect with me and Keith on LinkedIn. Uh, Keith, final words. Yeah, thanks, Ira. Janine, thank you so much for your time. I love the topic. Obviously, it's something I, I, I spend a lot of brain time with Monday through Friday on. Uh, one of the things that bl- totally blows my mind is how – when I've had the opportunity to speak to business leaders, business owners, CEOs, CFOs, COOs, they all get this. It just blows my mind how hard it is to get the groundswell to come around and really just take in a little bit of you know, a calm approach to the idea that, yes, you can improve your technology, keep it as a human thing have conversational recruiting, and you'll get the results you want. Don't worry about change. Change is happening. 
if you're not a part of this, you are going to be left behind. Yeah, and I, I'm going to be speaking actually in two weeks in uh, two different topics, and it's a little bit different. Uh, it's about uh, how to keep the H in HR. Yeah, you know, so uh, there's a lot more to be, be to go on there. <laughs> uh, we've got just a few seconds left here, uh, so we want to wrap this up. Uh, you've been listening to the Geek Skeezers and Googleization Show, where we bring you topics and thought leaders discussing the future of work where the tired, wired, and technology converge. Until next Wednesday, when we'll have our guest, Robbie Goury from Engage. We'll be talking about AI and HR. Uh, we're here every Wednesday. We're live 1 p.m. Eastern Time on W4CY.com. We're also on iHeartRadio On Demand, so you can download the podcast. You can listen to our past shows there. Uh, this is your host, Ira Wolf, co-host Keith Capagna. Don't let the shift hit your plans. Make change work for you. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. 